Summary of the Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. The storyteller, Jake Barnes, talks about his friend Robert Cohn. Cohn is an American living in Paris, just like Jake. But unlike Jake, he did not fight in World War I. He's a Jewish author who just put out a book and was Princeton's middleweight fighting champion in college. A woman named Frances Klein lives with Cohn. She used to be after his money, but now that she's older, she wants to marry him. Cohn feels like he's losing his life after reading a book that makes travel seem romantic. One day, he goes to see Jake, a writer, at work and asks him to go on a trip with him to South America. He says that bullfighters are the only ones who don't waste their lives, so Jake says no. That night, Jake meets Lady Brett Ashley while out with Cohn and other people. Jake got hurt in the war and Brett helped treat him as a volunteer. Brett is the independent, tomboyish wife of an English lord who is about to get split. While she was taking care of him, they fell in love. Brett tells Jake that she is sad and still loves him, just like he loves her. But even though they don't say it, it sounds like Jake's accident made him unable to have sex, and Brett doesn't want to give up sex, so they can't be together. They still agree to meet up the next afternoon. The next day, Jake and Cohn have lunch together. Cohn is crazy about Brett and gets mad when Jake talks badly about her and when he finds out that she's going to marry a Scottish war hero named Mike Campbell. Brett wakes Jake up to talk about their plans for the afternoon. A rich Greek man named Count Mipopopoulos shows up at his room in the middle of the night with her. He is a great time. The next day, Brett is going for a beach town in Spain called San Sebastian. She tells Jake that it's too hard for them to be close to each other. Around this time, Cohn also leaves Paris to spend time in the country. A writer and army friend of Jake's called Bill Gorton comes to Paris a few weeks later. They want to fish in Spain and then go to Pamplona for the fiesta and bullfights. Along the way, they plan to meet up with Cohn. In the afternoon of that day, Jake meets Brett, who is with her fiancé Mike after coming back from San Sebastian. Brett and Mike also want to go to Pamplona. Brett asks Jake in secret if Cohn is also coming, and then she tells Jake that she was with Cohn in San Sebastian. In Bayonne, France, Bill and Jake meet Cohn. The three of them then go to Pamplona. On the other hand, Brett gets sick while going with Mike to Pamplona. Jake and Bill plan to go fishing in the countryside of Spain, while Cohn stays in Pamplona to wait for her. Jake and Bill have five wonderful days together. They fish, play cards, drink, and talk about their army days and friends. On the fifth day, though, they find out that Brett and Mike are coming that night and decide to go back right away. Montoya owns a hotel in Pamplona where they stay. Montoya loves bullfighting and really gets why Jake does too. Jake, Bill, Cohn, Mike, and Brett all get together. They go to see the bulls leave the pen and see one kill a steer. Mike then says that Cohn is like a steer because he won't stop following Brett around. When the fiesta starts, everyone in Pamplona starts drinking and dancing. A bullfighter named Pedro Romero, who is 19 years old, stands out during the first day's fights. The fight is so violent that it draws Brett in, but it makes Cohn sick. Brett is also very interested in Romero. Brett finally gets Jake to introduce her to Romero, which makes Montoya sad because he thinks she will turn the boy bad. Mike insults Cone again, and they were about to fight when Jake pulled them apart. In the evening, Brett asks Jake to help her find Romero. He does, and she goes with Romero. Later that night, Cone shows up while Jake is out with Mike and Bill, who are both drunk. He wants to know where Brett is. Cone hits Mike and knocks Jake out cold after Jake says no and insults are thrown. When Jake wakes up and goes back to the hotel, he finds Cone crying in his room. Cone begs Jake to forgive him. There is some pushback, but Jake gives it. There is news that Cone is leaving Pamplona. The man is killed by a bull outside the bullring the next morning. Soon after, Bill and Mike tell Jake that Cohn also beat up Romero the night before, but Romero wouldn't back down. Cohn gave up and asked Romero to forgive him, but Romero hit him instead. 
This afternoon, a bullfighter named Belmonte who had just come out of retirement fails to live up to his image, and the crowd makes fun of him. But Romero fights so well that everyone loves him. In the evening, Mike tells Jake that Romero and Brett have left Pamplona together. The party is over the next day. Jake, Mike, and Bill all leave Pamplona at the same time and then go their different ways. Jake makes the choice not to go back to Paris and instead stays in San Sebastian. But soon after, Brett sends him a message saying she needs his help in Madrid. He goes right away and finds out that Brett left Romero because she was afraid of making him bad and because he wanted her to be a more traditional woman. Brett says that she and Jake could have had so much fun together as they ride through Madrid in a taxi. Jake replies, yes, isn't it pretty to think so? About the author. Ernest Hemingway grew up in a neighborhood in Chicago. His first job after high school was working for the Kansas City Star, but he quit after only six months to join the Red Cross Ambulance Corps during World War I. He was hurt while serving and was given the Silver Medal of Military Valor. He then moved to Ontario and Chicago, where he met Hadley Richardson, the woman who would become his first wife. They moved to Paris in 1921, where he worked on his writing and became friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald and other American writers from the lost generation who had lived abroad for a long time. After his first book, The Sun Also Rises, came out in 1926, he left Hadley and married Pauline Pfeiffer, who was born in Arkansas. Hemingway wrote A Farewell to Arms, 1929, which was a big hit, while the couple lived in Florida. Hemingway finally moved to Spain to work as a war reporter during the Spanish Civil War. It was this job that gave him the ideas for his famous book For Whom the Bell Tolls, which came out in 1939. After it came out, he met Martha Gellhorn, who would become his third wife. Hemingway married Mary Hemingway, his fourth and last wife, in 1946. They lived in Cuba together for 14 years. Hemingway won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1953 for The Old Man and the Sea. He also won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. Hemingway killed himself in 1961. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.